Hi everybody, it's Karen here from tuppenscolor.co.uk. Thank you very, very much for joining me today. Um, and these are what I've been playing with today. They are the Succulents Thin Nuts dies. And uh, initially I wasn't terribly impressed when I saw them in the catalogue. I thought, mm, yeah, I don't think I need those. And then I saw all of the really cool projects that people were, were posting there, things that they'd made with these, and then I thought, mm, maybe I do need them after all. Uh, so I got a set and I've been playing with them and uh, this is what I used them for. So stay with me and I'll show you what I did. Here's what I'm using today. I have mint macaron card. I've got um, the burlap ribbon. I'm using the succulent dies and I'm using uh, ink in mint macaron, Sahara sand and sweet sugar plum. So here are the six layers of the succulents and they've been die cut out in mint macaron and I found that if you were careful with the placement you could get um, four, four complete sets of these out of one piece of A4. Now at the moment they don't look particularly convincing, um, they, you know they're just one flat colour so we're going to do some sponging on them and uh, I'm going to show you what I do on the big piece uh, but I'm going to repeat it on the other five pieces as well. All right. So I'm going to begin with mint macaron. So I'm going, uh, you know, tone on tone here. Okay. And I am using a, uh, a splodge mat, a stamping mat, blending mat, not stamping mat, blending mat. Um, because I happen to have one, but you could use a craft mat or you could even use a bit of grid paper or A4 paper, just something to protect your surface. The advantage of this kind of shiny mat is that um, you can pick up the ink off the mat and that way you use less ink, but you know, there's not vast amounts of ink being used anyway. Okay, so after I've done the uh, kind of base layer, that helps the other colours to, to blend in a bit. So now I've got some Sahara sand. And if you look on YouTube and on Pinterest, there are um, there are all sorts of variations and um, different colours, different colour schemes that people have uh, have used on this particular um, project, die, whatever you want to call it. I'm trying to get quite heavy around the edges of the of the leaves here and just kind of bringing it in and it's blending nicely into my base layer of mint macaron okay so I'm reasonably happy with that and now I'm going to bring in my sweet sugar plum and uh, I find this colour works quite well actually with these I'm just gonna just get the edges and just Flick that in, okay? I don't want it too sweet, sugar plummy. Okay. And already that is looking much more convincing. Now I am going to just catch the back as well, just with the sweet sugar plum. This isn't really necessary, I am just a bit obsessive about it, okay? So now I've done that one, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same to the others. I've sponged all of the layers, and as you can see, that has made a terrific difference to the way that the card looks. Uh, it's now starting to look uh, like a real plant, on, but it's flat. So I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to give these some curves. So I've got a bone folder, and I'm just curling the petals or leaves or whatever they are I'm not uh, I'm not a gardener and I'm not a, a house planty type of person so I don't know so please forgive me if uh, I'm not using the correct botanical term so I've got that nice and curly I'm going to do this now to the rest of them so uh, I'll give you some music to listen to
there they are all nice and curly and I'm just going to start layering up and um, I think I'm going to start I'm going to work from the middle out it doesn't matter you can start from the base up or the middle out it's entirely up to you this time I'm going to start from the middle out so I'm going to put a little bit of glue onto the middle of my plant there and I'm just going to put the next smallest layer and I'm going to offset the petals now I have curled these um, quite severely so I'm just fiddling with it a bit just squishing it in so that that makes a nice tightly furled center okay well that's looking pretty good to me now this one as you will notice it met with a little bit of an accident but I'm not going to stress over that because uh, do you know what I'm just going to just going to glue it back on and uh, when you're curling the uh, these the, these are slightly more delicate they're not quite as robust as, as these pieces uh, it's good to hold on to the, the base of the petal there where it joins the, the center um, and to keep a tight hold on that when you're you're curling the tips okay and then it'll be less likely to uh, to break off but you know what it's only a bit of cardboard it's not the end of the world and if you have you, you know you make a complete mess of it you have to cut another one so what you know nobody died all right now that can go into the center there and the reason why I'm working from the, um, the inside out rather than the outside in as it were is because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to decide how big I want this one to be I think I want this one to be a little bit smaller than full size but I haven't quite decided yet because uh, you know it's crafting and uh, it's fluid but I will say that it is a little bit easier I think to go from the uh, from the outside in rather than from the inside out. Okay, so let's give that a bit of a squish. It's a technical term. Okay, so now this is turning into quite a tightly furled succulent. Okay. So let me put that together. All right, now. If I bring in some of the ones I did earlier, um, this one is in the same uh, the same colours, the the mint macaron uh, base card. But this one has been done with the same inks, but on old olive. And uh, can you see the difference there? And I'm just wondering whether to put that onto that one and make one super duper one and have that one a bit smaller. And yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I think that is what I'm going to do. So there you go, you see, you have choices. Just because it's presented to you in a certain fashion does not mean that you have to, uh, to do exactly that. Again, as I say, there are choices and you can make them. Okay, so now I'm going to let that, um, I'm going to let that dry I got this willow heart. I got this willow heart at Hobbycraft. Um, I think it was probably in a sale, um, and I think it's about six inches in that way and that way. Um, and it comes with this pretty bit of organza ribbon that you can use to hang it up with. But I want it a little bit uh, grungier than that, so I'm going to remove this ribbon to begin with, and it's well knotted on. So, uh, excuse me for a minute while I fight with fight with this. There we are. That's got it. Okay. And I'm going to straighten that out and put that on one side, and I will use it for something else because we never throw anything away in craft, do we? All right. Now I want to grunge this up a bit. I want more of a, you know, an earthy sort of feel to this. So uh, I'm going to add some of this product to it. Now it's not stamping up product. It's called Flower Soft. This colour is called Earth. And 
it's quite widely available now the thing to know about this stuff is that once you take it out of the pot you will never get it back in again because it's quite well compressed in there so I'm just going to tip it out into my little container here and I shall save that for keeping little small bits and pieces in little bits of jewelry findings or things like that all right and I have my wet glue um, and I'm just going to just smear some dabs just here and there all around this heart just you know quite randomly I'm kind of avoiding that area because that's where I'm going to put my my succulent die cuts but okay I think I'm quite happy with that and just maybe dab it out a little bit here and there because that's what fingers are for they are in my house anyway and I've got my little tidy tray here and I'm just going to scoop on the flower soft now this comes in all sorts of colours and I've gone with the, the earth tone today because that's the sort of vibe that I want to get but if you wanted to do this you could use you can get hold of flower soft you could use flock powder that would be good and I'm going to work quite quickly because the glue is drying up quite quite rapidly As you can see, it's like um, it's like an embossing powder. It just sticks to where the glue is and falls off where it isn't. Okay, and in this case, it goes all over my table. So uh, while that sets up for a minute, I'm just going to take a little brush and I'm going to clean this. I've cut a length of burlap ribbon, which is about six or seven inches long. It may be actually a bit too long, but we can always cut a bit more off, can't we? Can't add it. And what I'm doing is I'm um, disassembling it a bit I'm unraveling it so I'm just pulling out the fine thread that's in between each of those strands and I just want to get an end of it and I'm just kind of ripping it apart and uh, just having fun doing it so uh, So uh, it's got a little bit tangled, so I'm just going to bring in my scissors and I'm just going to snip away some of these threads. And if I can get a hold of one, uh, I'll try and pull it out. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to get on with doing this and I'll see you in a minute. I've left that bit in the middle uh, to keep it all together and I'm warming up my glue gun and I'm going to start putting things together now so I'm going to fold that uh, that away and uh, oops sticks fall out of the glue pen and uh, whenever I use this pen I always get asked or glue gun or whatever you want to call it I always get asked what is it and where can I get it and uh, it's a Bosch glue pen and I got it from Amazon and I will have a look and see if I can find a link for for it uh, or for something similar so you can you know you can head off and find one for yourself and it'll be below the video here okay so I'm just pushing that down into place and now I'm going to start arranging my uh, my, my succulents so nice lump of hot glue on the reverse there and let's pop that one into place where I want it okay and then we'll have this one next off to the side there like 
and one more. There we are. I want to replace that organza ribbon that was th threaded through that loop there. So what I've got is I've got a piece of ordinary garden string, which is about 20 inches long, I suppose. And I'm just going to thread that through the, the loop. And I'm just going to tie a knot in this end so that the other end of the loop is, you know, through the bit where the knot is, just like that, okay. And I'm going to tie an overhand knot at the end here, just to, you know, just to keep it in place a bit, okay. So that is quite nice and rustic, but I want to do one more thing to it, and that is I want to put a bow on it. So I've got my burlap ribbon, and I'm just going to tie a bow. So I'm making bunny ears. And as you notice, I'm keeping it attached to the to the um, the reel, so that I don't cut off more than I actually need, because that would be a waste. And we all hate waste. Okay, so I'm just going to fiddle with that a little bit until it's how I want it, which is pretty much there, I think. And I'm just going to chop off the end there. Okay, and I've had my glue gun uh, keeping warm here. I'm just going to fiddle with this a little bit. So that it's the way I want it to look. You know, don't be afraid of your bows. You know, you are the boss of the bow. Not the other way around. Okay, let's twist that so that those are both going in the same direction. And uh, my glue gun's just switched itself off because it does that automatically. So I'm just going to hold it for a couple of seconds while it comes up to speed again. While the light is flashing, that tells me that it's warming up. And it doesn't take long at all. It takes about 15 seconds or so, they say. We'll find out, shall we? There we go. That one didn't take long at all, did it? So a nice piece of, nice dollop of hot glue on the back of the ribbon and push that into place and once the glue has had time to cool a little bit that I think is done. There it is all finished and uh, I'm really really glad that I invested in these thinlets because I think they do a cracking job of uh, making something that looks really quite realistic. Uh, and this is going to go on my wall because I really, really like it. And I hope you do too. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if so, then please do uh, like, share and subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Or why not even hop on over to my Facebook page. There's a link below. And leave me a picture of what you've been making because I'd really like to see it. Uh, I'll be posting more videos very, very soon. But for now, thank you very, very much for joining me. And I hope I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.